the zipping, zigzagging shenanigans, and even street brawls of hummingbirds grab us. Who could resist watching these little hooligans? Now, the question isn't why they intrigue us. The question is why these little hellions fight so much. The short answer is that they're like bees, only not. Here's the deal. Both bee and bird want nectar, and gathering nectar requires them to have similar flight skills. So the hummers can fly in ways that other birds just can't. And one of those skills, the ability to hover, requires a metabolism that turns the birds into three-inch tall warriors. You've probably noticed that those freaking streaking acrobats fly like insects. This bird's got the moves of a bee because it feeds like one. It even works its wings the same way bees do, flapping backwards and forwards rather than up and down like other birds, and moving the wings in figure eights like bees. A bumblebee does about 230 figure eights a second. This Anna's hummingbird does 70 figure eights every second. And the ruby-throated hummingbird that I see at our Midwestern feeders does 53 cycles a second. So anyway, the mechanics of the hummingbird's wing movement power it, bee-like, to hover, which it has to do to gather nectar. Like bees, it can also fly backwards, straight up, sideways, and down. All necessary moves in circulating between blooms. One difference between bee and bird hollers at you, though, that the hummingbird doesn't bumble around. It can twirl in the air, slide into second, do a kamikaze dive, or plunge downward on its back, all with pinpoint control. Bees don't need that much control because they don't fight much, usually. So the hummingbirds are masters at flying, but that kind of insect-like flight, especially the ability to hover at plants, that requires a crazy fast metabolism, a heart rate of 1,200 beats a minute. There are a few birds in other bird families that can hover for a few seconds, but none of them have the reserves they'd need for hanging out on the air many minutes at a time. Hummingbirds can hover because their hearts are bigger in proportion to their body size than the heart of any other animal. I imagine the heart doesn't so much beat as vibrate, and fueling that huge vibrating heart in turn means that this small creature lives with a monster of an appetite to placate. A hummingbird eats half its body weight in nectar and bugs every day. This one's eating a bug it just caught, sharpening its bill between forays, and then going back for more. Now virtually all bird species fight over food, but a hummingbird's enormous appetite forces him to be enormously territorial. If another hummer shows up at his pantry, he puts those nectar-gathering flight skills to dramatic use against that presumptuous little twit, and the two of them perform aerial kung fu. But they do more than just battle. They fight on fast forward. And you know that if you watch their spats in real time, you see the whole thing, sure. Only, oops, brain lag. You saw it, but you don't exactly know what you did see. Like a dream you can't quite recall. So, out of regard for our bumbling brains, I'll show their spats in slow-mo. During breeding season, a good flower patch helps males attract mates, and that factor kicks his aggression up another notch. After breeding season, the birds will start packing on fat to prepare themselves for their long southward journeys. Many of the ruby throats that we see in the eastern half of the country cross the Gulf of Mexico without stopping. Now, that's an impressive feat for these tiny birds, but even if they circumvent the gulf, it's an arduous journey. In preparation, many of them double their weight. You can see that this one's gotten chunky. 
While they're fattening up, they're as touchy as ever about poachers. Poachers being what he thinks everybody else is. Including that butterfly, apparently. The only competition they'll tolerate is bees and wasps. The bird is forced to respect them. He might do -si do with one at a feeder, but he's not likely to attack because he knows that, small as he is, he could die from a wasp or a bee sting. The hummer, almost more like a bee than a bird, uses his insect-like flight in every skirmish, flying backwards, sideways, or upside down at full speed, and then cupping his tail in a banking maneuver so he can turn on an aerial dime. Maybe he spends so many calories booting every interloper off the premises that he doesn't come out ahead, I don't know. But obviously he thinks the fight is worth it. He has a bill that arrives everywhere five minutes before he does, and any rival that messes with this one's nectar patch is liable to find itself on the sharp end of his jousting tool. And his brain, big enough to match his outsized heart, is larger relative to his body size than that of any other bird. And that brain comes in handy in these quarrels. You know how we watch their spats with eyes that hobble along behind like someone using a cane? Well, their brains can keep up. When one hummingbird blazes in, ready to use its bill like a shiv, the brain of the one attacked registers every twist and turn of the zipping threat and orders up a jolt of high-octane adrenaline. These birds must feel like they could ride the whirlwind or race raindrops to the ground. They are fired up about defending their patch of blooms. Well, that sort of behavior has worked for millennia on millennia, but these days the food they want is often at a feeder, and in late summers there may well be quite a crowd there, because a couple of broods of juveniles have fledged. It's no longer a matter of two individuals squabbling once in a while over a good-sized plot of land. No, the contested area is squeezed into two or three cubic yards. So the fights are inevitable and frequent. And the hummingbird's fighting spirit doesn't serve it as well in these situations. They have never learned how to stand in line. And so, splaying their tails to signal that they are ready to bring it, they stand athwart the air, fidgeting like gunslingers waiting to see who will draw first. And somebody usually does. Even so, I'd say they do temper their fighting instincts. Looks to me like they recognize that no one of them owns the road. They're harried commuters, each watching the traffic for a chance to change lanes, hoping to get a spot at the feeder without suffering a fender bender. The hitch in jostling for their chance like that, though, is that they never know when one of them is just going to come out of nowhere, body slamming and stabbing. That feeder can turn into a war zone in less than a gasp. By the same token, peace of a sort does break out pretty often. It's a cardboard piece that smolders and eventually fans back into flame, but most of their clashes don't result in casualties. The birds just chase each other around a lot, which is wise because if they went at it full tilt every time, there'd be occasions when they got their wings tangled up like helicopter rotors. Instead, they mostly faint and jab, dancing around each other like lightweights on uppers, but making little actual contact. They quarrel just enough to establish their street cred and to work off some of the jitters from 1,200 heartbeats a minute. Many thanks to Rebecca Armstrong for inviting me to film the hummingbirds fighting in her yard.